Starship updates. SpaceX suits the men in black and white. Mars mission may be 2020 and Starship's insane flame diverter. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. SpaceX has become insanely busy lately, so much so that it has become hard work to filter all the information coming in. Since Monday, loads of things have happened again, so let's dive right in. Starhopper 200 meter test imminent. So tomorrow is the day we've been waiting for since the 20 meter hop. Wet tests are go, new rainbirds go flight, road closure dates go, FAA approval go flight, crowd definitely go for launch. There's one bit of new information about Raptor which will power tomorrow's flight and the Starship prototypes. Elon has confirmed on Twitter that Raptor will have a specific impulse of around 330 at sea level and 380 in vacuum. In comparison Merlin 1D, which is SpaceX's latest iteration for their Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy engine, has a specific impulse of 282 seconds at sea level and 311 seconds in vacuum. So Raptor is already at a level which surpasses Merlin by 15% at sea level and 18% in vacuum. These are great numbers for a rocket motor so early in development. Parts, parts, parts. Starship prototype production has obviously been sped up greatly recently. There are new parts moved into Boca Chica on a daily basis. Work continues at an incredibly fast pace. So what did we see move into the construction site recently? A bulkhead nose cone has been delivered by truck. An indication that the internals of our Starship Mark 1 prototype are progressing nicely. A pipe intersection has been lowered into the view protected container section by crane. This looks like an intersection of propellant pipes to me. Feel free to speculate with me. More small segments have been delivered also by truck from outside the construction site. These look like thinner hull segments. As an interesting side note there are writings on it covered by a sticker possibly to hide what they are for. Only the word SpaceX is readable. Why would they cover this up? What's written there that we're not supposed to read? These two tubes have been delivered 5 days ago, most likely internal parts. They have intersections with rings. They are at least 8 to 10 meters long. Are those fuel pipes? They seem awfully big for that. Where would they run them through? Again, if anyone has an idea, please let us know in the comments. And then there are loads of new metal sheets, most likely for more ring segments. Super heavy anyone? Construction should be underway by now. On May 23rd, asked when super heavy production would be started, Elon replied on Twitter with 3 months. That would put it at about a week from now. It would also answer the question how the orbital prototypes are supposed to reach orbit. A good part of the tech needed for Super Heavy is already well developed. It's comparable to a large Falcon 9 booster with Raptor engines. It will most likely use exactly the same method for its RTLS recovery. The whole load structure will be different, but that can best be verified with a working prototype. So we might even see a Super Heavy fly this year. Not as a stack with Starship though, that would be a bit crazy. But there's a good chance we might see first hop tests with it before Christmas. Wouldn't that be a nice present? And for the internal development schedule it would be desperately needed. When asked if Starship could do a possible Mars mission next year, yes you heard me right, Elon replied on Twitter when opportunity knocks. So Elon thinks there might be a chance of sending a Starship to Mars within the next 16 months. Now this is not an official schedule announcement or anything and Elon is known for his very ambitious timelines but he thinks there might be a slight chance. More importantly though, this makes the 2022 launch to Mars more realistic than before. If Musk thinks that Starship might be go flight in 2020, 2022 seems like a sure thing. Coco Road Constructions Two weeks ago SpaceX released a PDF file going into loads of details about Starship logistics in Florida. It was called the Draft Environmental Assessment for SpaceX Starship and Super Heavy Launch Vehicle at Kennedy Space Center. So first of all it's confirmed that SpaceX will use KSC as their primary launch site for Starship and Super Heavy. But for this SpaceX will have to move Starship and Super Heavy around between their manufacturing site in Coco and KSC. We got some actual numbers now on what they will have to move around. Starship will be 55 meters in length and 9 meters in diameter. The whole integrated vehicle with Super Heavy and Starship will be 118 meters in length. Which by the way will make it larger than a Saturn V at 110.6 meters by quite a bit. 
Recently, SpaceX has started clearing a forest near their Coco construction site. Now they've also started putting power lines into the ground near the FedEx ground to the south. This is a strong indicator for SpaceX wanting to build a new road next to the Starship Mark II construction site. This is possibly the first step for the pathway Starship and Super Heavy will take to get to their launch site at Pad 39A. The way would be clear onto Grissom Parkway and subsequently to Port Canaveral. It is not clear yet if Starship launches will also be a regular thing in Boca Chica. We will have to see about that. Starship and Super Heavy Flame Diverter System now there's another interesting thing to be learned from the environmental assessment. These assessments are needed for such huge projects to make sure that nothing bad happens during launch. This includes assessments of environmental impact to nature, historic sites and also noise and sound pressure. For a rocket like Starship and Super Heavy that's supposed to have at least 70,000 kN of thrust at launch, which is roughly double of what Saturn V had, you have to make sure nothing gets damaged when you ignite the engines. So Starship will not use the Falcon 9 Super Heavy launch structure. There will be a new one built on the opposite side on the same pad. For this, SpaceX will apparently build a 30 meter high flame diverter system. In the assessment they write that Starship will stand 150 meters tall above the ground when erected. If the rocket itself is only 118 meters tall, this leaves us with 30 meters of room for that diverter system. Which is insanely big for such an apparatus. What you can see in the video is the construction process of the flame diverter system at Pad 39B. That's where NASA will launch the SLS for the first time, hopefully, next year. Now SLS is a crazy large rocket by today's standards. And make no mistake that flame diverter at Pad 39B is huge. It's 13 meters tall. But the Starship's flame diverter, according to the assessment, will dwarf that. It will be more than double the size when finished. The 36 Raptor engines will put on quite the show for everyone to watch at launch. The whole project keeps blowing minds. It's the man in black and white. The main reason why space enthusiasts love SpaceX and their projects and visions is because they seem to do so many things right. They make rockets reusable. They want to go to the moon and to Mars not to plant flags and get dirt samples. They want to build colonies. But if we're truly honest, there's one more thing that makes SpaceX especially appealing to us. They're doing it in style. Be honest, we've all seen the Crew Dragon interior and got goosebumps because it looks so futuristic. Sure, we've also asked us if it will be practical to use, but the moment you see it, these thoughts are gone. It's so damn pretty, straight from a sci-fi movie. I've got so many comments from you about how Starship looks like a 50s sci-fi rocket and how we all appreciate the fact that SpaceX seems to also want to please these aesthetics. I mean, why did we love the space shuttle so much? Because it looked just awesome, majestic, futuristic. Now SpaceX is also working on improving another aesthetic aspect of space travel. They are reinventing the way astronauts will dress for the most important occasion in their life. Even they will look great when they walk through the gangway towards their starship. They will be très chic, as the French say, when stepping out of their Dragon capsule into the ISS. And Bob Beanken and Doug Hurley are rehearsing emergency procedures for their upcoming Crew Dragon demo mission too, which will send the two NASA astronauts to the ISS and mark a historic milestone for SpaceX. Recently, SpaceX held a training at their facility in Hawthorne, California for pre-launch operations. Doug Hurley, Bob Bainken and the ground operators got some very important routine for the NASA commercial crew program. The training provided an opportunity for the integrated team to dry run all of the activities, procedures and communication that will be exercised on launch day when a Crew Dragon spacecraft launches on a Falcon 9 rocket from Launch Complex 39A in Florida. The astronauts performed suit-up procedures alongside the SpaceX ground closeout team and suit engineers using the same ground support equipment, such as the seats and suit leak checkboxes that will be used on launch day. Following crew suit-up, the teams performed a simulated launch countdown with the astronauts inside a Crew Dragon simulator and performed several emergency egress or exit scenarios. There is no new info on when Crew Dragon 2 will launch. The investigation following the pet anomaly that destroyed a Crew Dragon earlier this year and led to the delay of Demo 2, which was supposed to originally fly in July, is almost finished now. 
SpaceX is targeting a launch no earlier than December this year and on July 30th NASA released a blog post. According to that, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine has directed all programs in the Human Exploration and Operations Directorate to re-examine flight dates once new leadership is in place to deliver realistic schedule plans. So it is very likely that a new launch date will slip into 2020. Until then we have loads of exciting milestones on the Starship side of things, so don't you worry too much, we won't be bored in the meantime. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Is Super Heavy already under construction and uh, looks important to you when it comes down to rockets and spacesuits? As always, tell me in the comments. The end of the episode, as always, is reserved to a very special kind of fans, my patrons. And this week, as always, we have new names to put on the list and to butcher live on the show. So everyone, please give a warm welcome to Rick Strickland, an easy name, thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, please don't forget to subscribe and like as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me more time to focus on what I really love doing, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. SpaceX is targeting a launch no earlier than Thursday. Yeah, <laughs> no, what? Put it up, up, up. <laughs> Just good. And Bob Bainken, Bainken, B, B, Bainken. Doug Hurley, Bob Bainken, and the ground operate, ground operators. Mark, <laughs> mark.